This is Stephen Kotler, and you're listening to Your Superior Self. This is Christina Rasmussen, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, I'm Anita Morjani, and this is Your Superior Self. Hi, this is Paul Selig, and this is Your Superior Self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is Your Superior Self. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome back. I'm Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to download this episode and listen and hang out with me today, right now, this second. Please hit subscribe, leave a rating and a review. It helps me scale the show and helps me get this out to those who may need it the most. And I feel like a lot of people need to hear about reality transurfing. Yeah. Today's guest, Renee Garcia, is the is the pioneer behind the movement in the West of bringing forth awareness of the modality called reality transurfing. She is making it her mission to lead that movement, to educate people on the methods used to create their own reality. And I know a lot of people are wondering what reality transurfing is. That is why I have her on the show today. So if you haven't heard about reality transurfing, you can go to transurfing.us. Check it out there. There's a quick bio. So it says on the website, reality transurfing is a mental practice that allows you to gain control of your current circumstances and start living life in a truly deep and meaningful way. Yeah. Who doesn't want that for themselves? I do. Renee did. And she did that for herself. And she explains that here on this episode. Uh, For those who do do not know who Renee is, I'll read you a quick excerpt from her bio, which I thought was very, um, very real, very vulnerable, very, it's very Renee and I love it. So my name is Renee Garcia and I'm a reality trans surfer. I'm not a self-help coach, motivational speaker, or a guru of anything. I am just another soul who has been searching for something to teach me how to live, to make things easier, to give my life some meaning. If these words get lost in a sea of bullshit, feel-good mantras, candy-coated empowerment memes, and con artist inspirational life coach websites, so be it. There have been many moments in my life where I couldn't even get out of bed. The world weighed on me, leaving me saddened, desperate, and lacking energy for even the most menial aspects of life. Never mind the achievement of seemingly elusive feelings of contentment and happiness. I've struggled, felt lost in search, excuse me, I felt lost in search at length for answers. And we talk about those answers in this episode. She felt a monumental shift when she stumbled upon this teaching of reality transurfing. And we go through her story. And what you have to do to create this reality for yourself. And I've always been saying that we've already created this reality. All of your decisions up to this point has created the reality that you are currently in. Where you are right now listening to this episode. This reality is a a result from everything that you created in your life. From your beliefs to your um, subconscious uh, actions to your your decisions in everyday life you, you you right here are a result of that reality and uh to give you a little bit more of a context about what the episode is here is a preview of what's to come acknowledge that that pain is there to help you accomplish something you know it's there to help you grow it's there to help you learn something or or achieve a higher state of being and if you can start shifting it over to this new perspective in your mind anytime you encounter anything painful you're like oh yeah this is good (laughs) you know this is really good 
Uh, I love that because how many people out there take the negative, I mean, even the extremely negative and actually turn it around into a good, and it can be hard, trust me, I know, I'm not saying that it is not hard to do. I am saying that if you can do that with the little things in your life, just start with little things and work your way towards the more difficult um, negatives in your life, you can become more empowered. You can change your mindset and turn it in on itself and start putting out different types of vibrations frequencies in the world that will attract different things to you even if even if you don't think that it will it i i just ask that you try just try to do it with with little like yesterday i had a nail in my tire and i'm thinking uh i have a nail in my tire all right well you know what i'm just gonna say all right i just have a nail in my tire i'm just gonna get it done i'm just gonna go ahead and get it taken care of so i go to the, the body shop ask the lady um can you take care of this for me? It's a nail. I'll, I'll, I'll wait if I have to. It doesn't matter. Just can you take care of this? And she's like, yeah, let me just look at it. And they had been broken into that day. And so a lot of things were going on then. Like a lot, it was just a lot of, lot of um, you know, they were kind of, you know, in a mood, right? Like, so you would be very, very disappointed if something hit, somebody had broken into your business and stolen some things. So while that was going on, I'm waiting, just sitting there, hanging out in the chair in the waiting room, <clears throat> reading a magazine, seeing if they can fix this tire. Next thing I know, probably 15 minutes have gone by, 20 minutes maybe, and I see my vehicle back up to the front door, like right parallel with it. I'm thinking, I guess they haven't, I guess they can't fix it. And the guy comes in, sets the key down and walks to the back. And she's like, all right, you're all taken care of. Um, Go ahead, we're good here. You don't, you know, you don't owe anything. I'm like, what? Like, what is that? Like, are you sure? Like, and I felt this overwhelming feeling of abundance, of happiness, of this is how you take care of your customers. This is how you create customers for life. But it was a negative, right? And I didn't totally look at it as a negative. Like, oh my, God. you know, I, I my body wanted to go there. My body, my mind wanted to go there, but I didn't allow it. I just said, you know what? I'll take it as it is. And what happened was that I was I attracted something positive in my life and it affected me throughout my entire day. I will be a, a, a life supporter of this, of this uh, business, of this, um, this mechanic garage that is down the street. <clears throat> and I will leave them great raving reviews. But... That is, is, that is something that I have, you know, it's little, right? But it's something that I could shift and, and put it in a different perspective. And then it attracted different results. They were going through a negative, like as I was there. And like, still I had probably the best customer experience in that situation. Like even as that was going on, the investigation with the cops, they were able to give me the best customer service possible for my situation and that really affected my day it really made me more positive it made me just give me an example kind of an old like a wake-up call like hey look this is you know this is just another example of you taking a negative and making it a positive or not even making or even looking at it as a negative but just accepting it as it comes into your reality and then just accepting it and then just moving with it and like tr reality trans surfing surfing that that ex that experience and then something positive coming out of that so i am very uh excited about this conversation with renee and and hopefully i'll introduce you to some new methods that you can apply in your life uh in your daily routine and then hopefully um you guys will reach back out and let me know how it's affecting uh your lives and how you've experienced some great uh, moments um to be experienced so let me know go to tradedowns.com yeah Kara's in the house she's awake she's ready to roll she's trans surfing this morning um <laughs> she wants to know about what's going on in your life too so hit me up tradedowns.com follow me on instagram tdowns80 and let me know so without further ado here is the great and powerful renee garcia
Hi, this is Renee Garcia, and this is your superior self. Renee, I cannot wait to talk to you tonight. <laughs> All right. I know. I've been excited for it, too. I kind of have a feeling it's going to be gold. <laughs> <laughs> going to be fire. Um, so... All right. So we're going to be talking about tran, I guess it's reality transurfing. Reality transurfing. Yes. And you're kind of like the, the girl who knows a lot about it. I mean, you have a YouTube channel, you're, you're partnering with the guy who wrote the book that is, talks all about reality transurfing and what it is. And, um, I had a really interesting, I wanted to know more about that. You know, so we had a 30 minute conversation prior to this interview or this conversation just to kind of get a feel about what it is. And I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so why don't you go ahead and uh, fill us in? What, what do we got? What, what are we looking at? So, yes, I am. I am the I'm the ringleader, I guess you could say. Of the circus. That, yeah. I love yes. It. Of the circus. I found this book um, about six years ago myself. And at the time I was in a super dark place. I had kind of given up on a lot of my, a lot of what I had built for myself and just a lot of my ideas about life. I was like, okay, this isn't working. And I don't, I don't know what to do, but I know that I need to do something else. And I kind of removed myself from my environment. I did one of those, like, I'm going to the country to figure it all out. And that's when I found trans surfing. And I wasn't like a self-help junkie or into self-development modalities. I wasn't, I'm not of this world. And I think a lot of people are surprised when, you know, they ask me, oh, do you know who Joe Dispenza is? And do you, have you read this? And I'm just like, Nope. I, I mean, now I, I inform myself about things that I hear people talking about, but my, what I found reality transurfing when I found it was the exact key that I needed at that moment. So I've never really questioned that there's anything else. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I just, I started applying the concepts to my life and I saw such a distinct shift in my perception so rapidly. I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Like, why isn't this a thing? Why hasn't anybody, why isn't anybody talking about this? Why, why have, you know, anybody that I asked that was well read, nobody had ever heard of the book. And there, you know, was a small movement going on in Europe and Middle Eastern countries, surprisingly. But, um, you know, I just, I was like, this is, this is it. This is me. This is for me right now. This is for me. This is my door to move through. I'm going to fucking bring this to the, I'm going to bring this to the English speaking world, you know, and for the last five going on six years, that's what my every single day has been about. And it has just been a rocket ship. And I mean, it's just really starting to take off now. I've already seen incredible growth with getting the word out there, but the last year it's been, it's been uh, really significant. Yeah, no, that's great. I think that's awesome. I think more people need to, to hear what you have to say. Um, what's interesting to me is you're not of this world, right? Um, yeah. Explain on that. Well, I, I grew up poverty level. I just, all the limiting beliefs that a human being could have, I carried with me until I was about 35 years old. I still managed to find success mm -hmm. and I found a good, a good deal of success in a business that I had built for myself. I didn't go to college. I didn't even graduate from high school. So there were, there have been a lot of moments in my life where people have asked me like, how have you done this? You know, especially living in a place like Los Angeles, how have you done this? How have you built this? Before I left LA, I was living on 
a 42 foot sailboat that I bought and learned how to sail single-handedly by myself. And it just blew people's minds. They were like, like, who are you? How do you have this life? What? And, you know, I learned later when I found trans surfing, why I had had all those positive, um, experiences, why I had had that success, why I had sort of carved my own path, regardless of the limited nature of what I had been given or my, my skill set. But at the same time, living that 35 years, I suffered from an extreme poverty mentality, like really, really serious poverty mentality. And I think this is actually what ended up kind of breaking me because here I was gaining this success and living the life, you know, my boat was in Marina Del Rey. I had this bitch in lifestyle. I was my own boss. My business was successful. Everything was, you know, everything was seemingly good yet. I was just living this weird kind of fear-based thing where I was just constantly worried about what was going to, what was going to go wrong, what was going to break it, what was, how I was going to continue to thrive, how, you know, just like, but not in a good way. And I, I just became increasingly miserable. And, and at a certain point I was like, okay, I don't get this. I grew up poor. I always told myself if I had money, if I had freedom to do what I want, money to do what I wanted, then I would be happy. And then I had all this stuff. And the more that I got, the more miserable I became. I mean, this is a really old story that we've heard a lot of times, but I actually experienced this, you know, where it was like things seemingly improved in my external reality yeah, internally, I was just suffering beyond measure, you know, and that's when it kind of like, that's when it's, it broke. <laughs> that's when, when I got, got, that's when you found, I mean, is that the, the time you found this book? It was about, it was about six months before. Six months before. So you read this book and I mean, how did you come across it? You know, one night I was just scrolling through Instagram and I followed this artist just some random account and somebody commented in a comment on her picture they just said have you ever heard of reality transurfing and it was like this super weird thing just kind of happened that I can't even explain I saw the two words and I was mm -hmm. like it was like a door like a golden door or a keyhole or something where I just saw something about my future and I dove right in. There was an audiobook at the time on YouTube and I started, I was going for these epic long walks at night through Portland. I was living in Portland at the time and uh, I was listening to this thing and it was just like blowing my mind. <laughs> it just blew my mind. <laughs> anybody, anybody that you know, if you have any listeners that have listened to it, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you do listen to it, it'll blow your mind. It's mind blowing. I can't wait to listen to it. Um, Cause we talked about a little bit before um, reality trans surfing, right? It, it's kind of similar, a similar concept to law of attraction, right? Like kind of, we had a, what was it? Like a little joke talking about who, you know, law of what, attraction what, yeah. for smart people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But like, I think that's so interesting because like, I don't, I don't, I do not believe like I, I, man, I tell you what, um, Renee, I've been devouring Dr. David Hawkins. His, oh, I his love David Hawkins literature. now. Yeah. Um, devouring it. And like, I, I, I can't explain to you like <clears throat> his, his, and for those people listening, you have to read his book. What is it? Force or power versus force or something. it's either vice versa. I can't remember the name of it. It's if it's force versus power or whatever, but like the concept that we can raise our consciousness to a certain level and what um, his message is, is, it's just so powerful. I mean, it's just so powerful. And letting go is a good one too. I love that letting book. go. I, I reference that one a lot. Yeah. Letting go. And I think that's so David Hawkins and, and reality trans surfing have a lot of parallels. Um, trans surfing sort of instructs us to 
lessen the grip of control on ourselves and our realities, our environment, other people, and in giving in to what we call the alternative flow. This is really focusing on what is being presented to you by your external environment, not you trying to force anything with your will or your ego, letting go, and then just letting your world take you with what you can bring that's unique to you, your skills, your attributes, you know, all the things that you, all the things about who you truly are as an individual. And you bring this like meeting your world halfway with what your world's presenting. And it's just, it's magical. I mean, this is exactly what I've experienced and it's really, really magical. Yeah. Like he was explaining something about, all right. So you, you have a thought. It's a, it's a, it's a, you have an idea or you have a thought in your brain. It it, It lets off this electric reaction. And then you have this emotion that's tied to it that releases a chemical reaction. And now you're creating this electrical magnetic field around your, your body energy. And that attracts things into your life. Um, which I believe a hundred percent because I look at my life and there's no doubt in my mind that I've created it. And we've created this thus far, right? Like you lived your life. You've created this life for yourself. I've created this reality for myself. And I mean, doing it unconsciously, you know, like not even realizing that I'm doing it. And then once you have that idea, you know, like once you have that idea that you're, you can change your reality, like, and people are listening to this right now, like probably, you know, some of them might have an idea about what we're talking about, but most are kind of like probably new and fresh to the idea of, of, of you can create your own reality. I mean, like you can't just wish for fucking Ferrari and you get it. I mean, it's like, you have to do the work, right? Like you have to be right. You have to, you have to have this certain beingness about you. This, this confidence that you are a part of the, the bigger picture of the higher consciousness and yes. that you align to your, your, your being, your, your, your consciousness aligns with the bigger picture and you, you can, you know, you can't use this shit for evil. It won't work. Um, yeah. But you got to be able to believe in it and believe that you already are that, that what you want. And then it's like bringing it forth from the, the, uh, what does he call it? It's like from non-form to form, right? Yeah. Calling bringing it, out. it from the quantum field into yeah. physical reality shooting that rocket ship of desire out into the world and then having that, that electrical magnetic field around you, just bringing things to you. But that's the, that's the thing, right? Like you got to live your life where you're in that same field, that same vibe, that same frequency. So it comes to you because like we discussed earlier, you know, before in a conversation, it's like, you know, you're driving to California in a car, right? And from from baltimore and i know it's going to take a long time to get there i don't get halfway across the country and say oh you know what i'm still not there you know like i got to turn around now you know i'm not gonna get there you know that you're eventually going to get there you just got to keep going um i mean same type of concept right yeah i mean that's that's why i think a lot of people don't have what they want is because the desire is there, but then the other components of creating your own reality are, are absent really. And, you know, I get that, I get so many messages from people and emails and a lot of them are like, Hey, how do I manifest a million dollars tomorrow? And I'm just like, dude, really? Like, first of all, you can't, right? Or I mean, I guess there's some version of reality where that would happen for somebody, they win the lottery or whatever. But the odds of that, you know, are very low. Um, But I think people have a lot of, there's a lot of confusion around what it takes to become something or what it takes to truly have something. They think that they have to do something first and then achieve the thing. And then they can, and then they can feel the rewards of having whatever it was that they were desiring. It's like a messed up 
the, the, the series of events is messed up. The, the way that you do it, the way that you tap into wealth, the way that you find the romantic partner, the way that you become successful is that you actually start living that version of reality prematurely in your mind, in your thoughts, in your, in your actions, you start doing the things that you believe that version of you in that reality that you desire, you start living that now and the world responds to that and brings you everything that you need to help actually turn that desire into, into to, to, to materialize that desire. And a lot of people get stuck just on the desire of their life. Well, I want a million dollars. I want to be rich. You know, I don't want to be well. And that's the other thing is a lot of people, a lot of people focus on what they don't want rather than what they want. Well, I don't want to be poor anymore. Well, I don't want to struggle. Well, I don't want to be white trash anymore. Well, I don't want to whatever. Right. But if you could just shift your, your, your perspective, shift your focus to what you strive to achieve and really just stay dialed in to the thoughts that you need to have in order to achieve that desire, which is what sort of thoughts does that version of me have? What's the quality of thinking? What's the direction of thinking? Then the frequency, frequency is super important. You can't say I want a million dollars, but then tell yourself in your mind that you're poor because those two realities, they're, they're just not gonna match up. And then your actions have to be in line with that version of you, that version of reality. You have to actually take the steps, like you said, driving the car from Maryland to California. You know, you, 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 can't, you can't say you wanna be in California, but then never get in the car. And that's where most people kind of are, or maybe they're in the car, but then they don't have you get scared, maybe. A full you know, tank like, of gas. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, here's the thing, right? You want to be successful, but what if you get there, right? Like, are you scared of what that success will bring? You know what I mean? Like, you're gonna have to change. Are you scared of change? So these things are not gonna happen if you if you can if you don't believe that if you have these limiting beliefs. So, yeah. like, if you want to be, uh, I don't know, like, if you want to be successful or rich, you know what kind of change that's gonna bring? Like, you're gonna, you know. A lot of people are going to be coming out of the woodwork asking for money or people are going to be looking at you differently. Oh, he has changed. You're going to lose a lot of friends. I mean, but that's the thing, right? Like, I don't know. For me, it's not really necessarily that. It's more so like me trying to change my reality so that way I can grow spiritually or raise my consciousness to those higher levels that Dr. Hawkins talks about, you know, getting into the 700s and, and realizing like you don't need any of that shit, man. Like if you're in that, if you're in that energy level, if you're in that, that consciousness, like all the external shit just starts falling off. Like he talks about in one of his books, like you get to a certain point where you don't even need that. Like, you know, like, I don't, what do you need? You know, somebody comes up to you, like Renee, you come to me and say, Hey, Trey, what do you need? I don't need anything. You know? It's, yeah. It's like that. It's, and you have this love. You're like in love with everything. It's not like in love. Like I'm at, Oh, Renee, I'm in love with you. It's like, this love, this like, uh, just kind of like you're looking at a, a, you know, like I look at my kids kind of love, you know, like yeah, just this love and, and just taking in the beauty of everything, getting to that status, like, and just kind of like, rather than just desiring yeah. stuff that you aren't really taking actions to. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I actually have a course called becoming magnetic and that's exactly what I teach, you know, that, that, that amplifying love inside of you to increase not only love coming in your direction externally, but also other stuff. And this is where I have like, you know, a very profound <laughs> difference in who I am today and who I was pre-reality transurfing. I was a very selfish person. I was a very, um, you know, fearful person. Again, focusing on what I didn't like, what I didn't want, um, picking things apart, picking people apart, picking myself apart. And when I dove into the world of really falling in love with myself, with my reality, with my opportunities, with the people that I encounter, with the different things that I do in my life and really just like, you know, just luxuriating in whatever there is positive there. 
I've gotten so much stuff flowing in my direction now. It's stupid, you know, and I would never, this is, this is how I know this absolutely does work because, you know, it's, I haven't done anything truly exceptional, except I found a goal that was intended for me. I'm taking actions towards that goal, which is spreading the word of reality transurfing. And I'm just living a pure version of myself and I'm being open to the people that I encounter and my world, you know, and it's pretty simple and the rewards have been immeasurable, you know, really, really immeasurable. That's awesome. Like I, I, I just, I love hearing that. Like, did you have to, like for, for me, right? Like I had to, I did listen to Joe Dispenza. That's when I first, I mean, I kind of listened, I learned, you know, I think I can't remember if it, what movie it was, the secret or something like I kind of, I didn't know what that was. You know, I didn't know what the law of attraction was yeah. and here I, I didn't fully understand it. And what, what helped me understand it more was Dr. Joe Dispenza. It was more so him going into the neuroscience of, of the cell, right? Like the epigenetics, the, the unconscious and consciousness, of your cells at a, at a molecular level, like at the very micro level of our bodies is, is pure energy. And people just, I don't know. It's just like all the program programming that we've grown up with to think that Mm. we're not, you know, like we are energy and like, you know, attract attracts the same, you know what I mean? Like, like attracts like, it's just like what you put out comes back to you. What you damn damns you back as Paul Selig says, and it's like, I totally agree with it. And it wasn't until I started learning about quantum quantum physics, started t- learning about the quantum realm, where I started saying, oh, like this makes sense. Like this, I can totally see this happening. And, and like, I, I'm currently in the practice of trying to, I wouldn't say trying, I am in the process of creating my reality. Like not, not just creating it, but changing it, like manipulating it, right. Being that uh, creator of my universe. Right. And and you're seeing the results. Like, can you give people like a practice, a a method they can use to put in into their everyday use right now? Like, how do you do that? Is it meditation or is it like, no, no, it doesn't have anything to do with meditation. Um, you know, there, there are a number of steps. We, we have something we're doing right now in our, um, in our Facebook group, which is really a miraculous place for being Facebook. Everybody is super inspiring. There's 6,000 people in there right now, 5,700 of them are active. So that's like, you know, people are into it. And um, everybody's just really positive, doing super cool stuff and really taking this knowledge to the next level. And we have a challenge in there right now. It's called Quantum Boot Camp. And what Quantum Boot Camp is, it's a 30 day media cleanse. Mm. So, media and social media that's um, negative or destructive, only positive in your feed or nothing at all. And then we have something called the 30 anomalous action challenge. And that is for, for 30 consecutive days, each day you take one step outside of your comfort zone in a direction that's new to you. It could be anything. It could be doing research on a business idea that's been in the back of your mind for a while. It could be networking with someone that, you know, you've been a little bit shy to network with. It could be driving a different way to work, switching up your exercise routine, changing your diet. It could be just anything. Maybe something's asked of you from somebody in your environment. And instead of you saying no, you say yes, right? So there's a couple of other points, but those are the two main points, the media cleanse and the anomalous action challenge. And what this does is it pulls your energy away from powers at bay that are sucking a lot of people's energy right now in really, really negative and and destructive ways, like really captivating people to the extent where they kind of forget about their own reality and they get sucked into this, this other reality that's being created for them. And then once you've sort of pulled yourself away from 
some of the biggest distractions, then you have a little more energy to put in the in new direction, right? To, to, to step in new direction. So once you get on the role of doing that, your reality just kind of opens up and opportunities really start to exponentially increase, like really, um, you know, obviously like things start to shift. And I think a lot of it happens because what you were talking about, like, you know, we're energy, right. And we're, and, and, and we're frequency. So when you start mixing it up in your reality and you're taking new action and you're encountering new things, you become, you become curious and you become a little more alive. And when this happens, you start attracting more that's going to agree with this way that you're feeling. And it just kind of snowballs. And some of the people in the Facebook group are seeing like amazing results doing this quantum boot camp. We're in like day 10 of day 30 right now. It ends on Jan on December 31st because January 1st is um, our first official trans surfers holiday. So we have like a whole thing we're doing, but you know, it, to, to talk about steps, the, the book is quite large, right? It's, um, I have it here to show anyone that's watching this. It's Holy big. shit. Yeah. How big is that? It's, it's big. How many pages? It's, uh, I think it's eight. It's seven, 750, 767. So how, like who, the author, right? Like we, we talked about this before. You said he's very elusive, right? Like he doesn't want any attention. He doesn't want people to, you know, uh, I guess, worship him in a, in a way, right? Like to yep. uh, make this a religion or something like that. Um, a lot of people believe he doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, there's a lot of like speculation and theory of who he is. I mean, he's my personal, he's my friend. So I know he exists. I know him. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. He's a real person. I've met him in person. He does exist, but he's very, he does not want, he, it, the name on the book is not his name, a real name. He's used, he's used a name that's not his and he does not want any, he does not. Is want that a real anything. picture of him? Like in, in, in like some other, I think looking for him, is yes. that his picture? Yep. That's his picture. That's him. Okay. But he doesn't want, he doesn't want any fame. He doesn't want any, he, and he just, he's like, okay, Renee, you do, <laughs> you do the book, you do the, you do the promotion, you do the face of the book. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big book, but here's the thing with the book. I know a lot of people see the book for the first time. They're like, holy shit, I'm, I can't read that. Well, first of all, we have the audiobook. Second, I have a ton of videos that breaks down all the different concepts in the book. But the book, really only the first fifth of the book is the new knowledge. After that, it's just reiteration, saying it in, a, in different ways and, and pitching it to you in different ways. Um, kind of how to apply it practically in your mind. So it's kind of like the first part of the book is to educate you on the concepts. The rest of the book is reprogramming your brain to think in this new way. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like, you know, reality 2.0. It's, it's, it's a completely, a completely different way of viewing yourself your reality and your relationship to your reality. And a lot of people, you know, the suntan effect, they read a book, they love it and they put it up on the shelf and within a matter of weeks or months, it just fades into the background. Trans surfing stays with people because of the way that it was written and what it actually opens your eyes to, you know, what you, the insights are, the insights are very, very um, unforgettable. Yeah. People forget, like we've been programs, you know, in our reality here, our entire lives. Um, I mean, essentially you and I are like right around the same time. Like I'm 30, I was 35, I'm 37 now. I was 35 right around the time that like I started questioning consciousness and the higher being and, and what it is that we're here for. And, um, and I think people hear that and they're like, Oh, what well, you trying to, you're, 
brainwash us. And it's like, no, no, it's, it's, it's writing, overriding that program that you've been taught, right? Like if you think about it, everything that you've been taught has You're come You're already somebody. brainwashed. Yeah. You're already yeah. brainwashed. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, they, they just don't understand. Like, I don't know. So like, I'm still learning, you know, like I'm still evolving. I'm still expanding. I'm still, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I know everything like I, but I know what I am. Right. Like I know what, you know, what I, I am, a, I am this source of energy that is, that wants to expand to want, and does that through knowledge. Right. And that, that is what I tell people. Like, if don't just take my word for it, go out and research this stuff for yourself. Look at quantum physics, you know, follow Renee do you know, try this stuff and see what it does for you? Look at you know, Doctor Doctor Hawkins, his his content is just phenomenal. This dude is an MD and a PhD, right? Like he he knows his stuff. Like he has been published oh, yeah. so many times, like mind. so many times. Like these are actual academic geniuses that are out there putting this information out and we're just we we choose not to, to listen to it because like you know obviously people want to keep us in that fear state and want to control us and it's like once you see you know what it is that you really are and what you're capable of like you can there's never there's no going back to that the power of choice and i think that that's what has been what has been lost you know is this this society that we're living in and the entities that want to you know convince us that this is the way it is and this is this is the truth right and you must adhere to these standards and you you know you've got to be like this if you want to be a good person and if you don't then you're a bad person and there's all this like you know there's all this stuff going on with um corralling us into a collective um a collective day day state of being dazed and confused you know the, the entities don't want us to be informed that we have the ability to choose our own reality to choose our own perspective to choose our own you know <laughs> level of awareness and you know, you, you touched on it earlier and I wanted to say something about it. The, um, you know, the idea that your reality now is a, a collective of your past thought patterns and actions and they've culminated up until this moment. And that is how your reality was created when people, you know, contact me and they're like, how do I start creating my own reality today? I'm like, dude, you've been creating your own reality this whole time. Like what you're experiencing right now is your creation, right? You, if you want something bigger and better for yourself, then I know a way, right? But first the acknowledgement of what you've already done, good and bad right? A reconciliation or a, a reckoning, like what has gotten you to the place where you're, you know, sometimes, you know, desperate to create a new reality for yourself. I know I was, um, but I had to really look at what I had done that had put me in a place where I so desperately wanted a new reality that I needed answers that I needed to you know, I needed to rise up and I needed to gain some awareness about certain things. And reality transurfing is definitely what helped me, <laughs> what helped me do that, you know, but it, yeah, it's kind of like that moment where you realize you've been creating your own reality all along when you kind of like, you know, get shown this information. And then it's like, oh, Jesus Christ, I see it now. I see exactly what I what's got me here right yeah. exactly and it's it's a trip it's like watching a movie now right like just kind of like sitting back watching like just things happen interactions happen but i mean it's it's being aware of like what your body is doing to the ego right the, the ego i mean we we are evolved the way that we are for survival i mean there our basic our basic need is survival and the ego was developed out of that and and it, it doesn't want to lose a hold of that right like it doesn't want to totally. lose that it doesn't it tells you this shit that you don't want to hear like like why are you listening to trey and renee man like we're cool like why are you listening to this like we don't need to change our reality we're we're, we're good right where we're at totally um, 
<laughs> uh, totally, you know, and, and, and reality transurfing has the answer of exactly what that, why the ego is doing that. We call it inner intention. It's your, it's your mind. It's your, it's your, um, you know, your will. It's you, it's you thinking I've got the answers, right? I got the answers. I just gotta, I just gotta do it harder, do it more, do it faster, do it, you know, but I got the answers. I'm just, I gotta do it, do it this, you know, this way. And then something maybe will happen down the line. I'm doing the right thing or, or this is all I have and kind of like, accepting your lot right that's another way that the ego just kind of like keeps hold of the keeps control of the situation but sort of in a very limited belief kind of way well this is what you've been this is what you've been given so you better make do Mm -hmm. right but there's a total other place to work from and this is um it's not about turning the voice of your ego down it's about tuning in to that other voice and it kind of drowns out Mm. the ego's voice and once you switch over then anytime the ego starts doing its thing you're like it's a fucking ego doesn't work anymore Uh, no no that true voice right like your higher self that that higher self is that voice right like that i can i can tune into it now like through meditation i i can tune into my higher voice it's not my ego. My ego is a fucking dickhead. Yeah. Um, but like you said, right? Like it's always trying to be that competition because that is the genetic makeup of my body is, is that's how I survived. Um, you know, I say I, but human race Humans, has survived, yes. right? Like through survival is through competition, through being the, the, the biggest, the baddest badass. And it's just being aware of that. Like, I mean, even like depression totally. and anxiety and like all oh, of that absolutely. chemical reactions that going on in your body, it's your fucking body. Like, I'm not like, like I struggle with depression and anxiety too, but what really, really helped me was realizing what the body is doing. Yes. The body is releasing these chemicals into your body that is cortisol and some, you know, a shit ton of others. And it's like, man, I'm feeling like shit. I can't come out of this. Like, what is going on? There's something wrong with me. No, there's not anything wrong with you. It is, um, it is your body is chemically, chemically reacting to your environment. And it's, yeah. it, you have to be aware of that. Anxiety has saved us over decades and decades and decades of evolution. Oh, right? Totally. I st- I talk about that all the time on my channel. I'm like fear and anxiety and worry is what actually allowed us to evolve as a species. Cause had we not, you know, if we were, if we were, you know, cave people looking down at the pretty fucking flower on the ground and like, Oh, isn't life great. You know, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had yeah, you'd be dead. all this. Yeah. All those chemicals, fight or flight, you know, being hyper aware of your environment, all that stuff. But that's what has, that's we've, we've, our, our environment has evolved. We haven't yet. Right. So we're still fear, anxiety, you know, stress hormones and all this stuff. And once you do wake up to that, you can kind of just like see it for what it is when it's going down and it doesn't fuck with you anymore yeah, you know we're in a worse situation now than we were back when we were fucking cave people because like we have like you know these this new technology that it's always we're always in fight or flight all the time like you know we got fucking work emails going off at 9 p.m you got you know you got more you got more access right like you it's we don't have that saber tooth tiger attacking us. We have uh, social anxieties now, right? Totally. Like trying to be the best. We're trying to be influencers. You know, I got a free hat because people like me on Instagram. Like you know, it's just like that that ego that is just driving us because they want us. To, it's like uh, I, my kids go to private school, right? Like not because of of ego, but because that, that we believe that they're receiving a different type of education that we prefer. That is the only reason why, and it's it's funny going to that school and seeing the cars with all the stickers all over them. And I'm like, ego, 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 you know, you can drive down the street and see all of the, 
the different types of stickers and, and immediately see ego, ego, ego. Like, it's just like being aware, just wake the fuck up. Like, I know, you know, like, I know, believe me, I, but here's the thing about that at a certain point, it's like, you know, it's kind of hard hitting when you first realize it and you're like, Oh my God, it's so fucked up. And Oh, look at all these people that, you know, are so ego driven and look at how sad all these people are that they're striving for stuff that they don't even really want stuff that isn't even going to really make them happy in the end. And they'll find that out. Right. And kind of like seeing that, and I don't mean this in a condescending way, but like you can start to see, you can start to see the patterns that most people fall into and you can start to see the destructive, you know, stuff that ensues like, yeah, you got the, you got all the stuff that you wanted. Now you're, you know, you're consuming way more alcohol nightly than you ever have. Right. And you're not sleeping that well. And, but wait a second, didn't, didn't, you want all this, you know, and then, and then this disconnect, this disjointed way that a lot of people are, are living. And at a certain point for me, when I, I remember it happened very, very clearly for me, I was at some international airport, I think it was in Amsterdam or something. And I was sitting on a bench and I was watching like, you know, hundreds of people pass by me. And I was just seeing them with totally open eyes and I could see like the worry the fear the just discontent all these negative emotions I could barely pinpoint anybody in the crowd that resembled anything close to being happy and I was like oh my god this is so scary but then at a certain point I it flipped for me and I started to kind of see it as entertaining. And I know that probably sounds a little sick, but I'm a little bit of a nihilist. I love, I love nihilistic and, and pessimistic philosophy because I feel like it kind of puts everything back into its place. And that is really that life is absolutely meaningless. The only meaning that life really has is the meaning that you assign to it. The only meaning that anything has is the meaning that you assign to it. There is no predetermined meaning there's no nobody has set any meaning on anything we are a blip in space and time that is going to ex extinguish in the grand cosmic scheme of things probably you know we're just like us a, a little flash right and when you can kind of like bring it to this place and really just view it for what it is it's nothing it's nothing. And I know this is like, people are going to be like, oh my God, that's crazy. But when you can, can when you can look at it like that, then you, when you see depression, anxiety, people acting from ego, people suffering, all this kind of stuff, it just brings it all down. And you're like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. If you have anxiety and you have depression, and I know this is a challenge when, people are going through this stuff. My God, I had immense, immense struggles and challenges with anxiety and depression. Horrible. I was hospitalized a number of times for depression that was so bad. I could, I couldn't even move. I would just freeze. And I was so, I was so, there was just so much wrong. And now, you know, fast forward 25 years later, 20 years later, I can see that all that quote unquote wrong stuff was really just only assigned wrong in my mind or was some bullshit external programming that I allowed to layer on top of who I really am as a person. And once I realized that my thoughts were my enemy at the time and the programming, the external programming was my enemy. Then I could start to work to take that stuff off. And then miraculously, there's no more depression and anxiety, you know, but I mean, once in a while, I still get, you know, I have family stuff going on. My sister's got stage three breast cancer with three young kids and 
you know, going through nightmare chemo and all that stuff. So I definitely have my down days and once in a while I'll be like, Oh my God, where's, where's it all going? But Mm -hmm. whatever it's, it's all good. Right. It's not that important. And I know that probably sounds very, very cold, but it's kind of how I see it. And that perspective has helped me immensely. Well, let me ask you this. So God forbid something happened to you. Like, how do you approach that, right? Like that mindset that you're talking about, like, like say if you get injured or you get sick, like your sister is like, how do yeah. you approach that situation? Well, we have something in, in trans surfing, we call it advantage. And what advantage is, is it's, it's a belief the trans surfers hold that everything, everything, Mm -hmm. every event that happens, happens for us. There's some, there is some benefit, there is some gain. So either you can, either you can pinpoint that advantage and you can see it either if you're very lucky in the moment or shortly after, like this would be a scenario like, you're driving down the highway and you get a flat tire and you know, your non trans surfing mind would be like, God damn it. I got a flat tire. Why does this always happen to me? But a trans surfer would get out of the car and see that the tire was flat and be like, perfect. Thank you. Right. And then, and then maybe like you get the tire fixed and you start going down the road and you see that there was a 10 car pileup that you weren't involved in. Right. You know, okay, that's why I had the flat tire. Um, there was a really good story that I heard a couple of weeks ago on a documentary where this woman was, her mother was in a concentration camp back in the Holocaust and she had lost everybody. She had lost her whole family and they had taken you know everything from her and she befriended this older woman who became like her emotional support were her everything and one day they gathered them all up and they put them into a line and one by one they either chose the people to go to one side or the other well when the two women got up to the officer he said go to this side so both the women started to go to the one side he directed them to and another officer came out and grabbed the younger woman and threw her in the other direction and she was very distraught she didn't want to be separated from her friend so she started cursing and crying and saying why and the guide threw her again and she went you know she went off in the direction that he put her and then later she learned that all the people that were going in that direction were sent to the gas chamber so you know, at, at, and I had something really bad happen to me right before I found trans surfing. And at the time I thought it was the absolute worst thing that could have ever happened to me. And now I realize, looking at it retrospectively, it was the best thing that happened to me because it broke me and I needed to be broken. I needed to be broken so then I could start building and recovering and and doing the things that I've done that have built my life now, right? So advantage is a huge concept in the trans surfing modality and it makes things so easy. It's like even down to little things, like you get to the grocery store and there's a long line, you know, and you walk up and you're like, fuck, I don't want it. But then you're like, wait a second. Nope, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. And when you can start, so getting back to what you were talking about, you know, the cellular level and the energy and the frequency and all that stuff, when you can really start resonating at a frequency that everything is working for you in your world, amazing things start to happen. Your world starts working for you. Everything starts working for you. And even if it's not, you're totally fine with it. And it doesn't mess up your it doesn't mess up your flow. Yeah. So what I, what I like to say is things don't happen to me. They happen for me. You know, everything's happening for me every moment. Yeah. I can look back on everything and say, you know, I'm glad that that happened. Right. Like if, if you can't look back and say, I'm glad that happened because I got something out of it, then you're not through it yet. You, know totally. I mean? um, you missed it or you missed it. 
Yeah. Or you missed the, the, you. Yeah. I mean, there's, there, I mean, you're just not through it. You're just, you're just not, you haven't learned that lesson, what you're supposed to be. You're, you're either too attached to it and you can't see it because you're still emotionally attached and you're still 30 years, you know, 30 years ago, something happened and you can't get over it. Like there's a lesson to be learned and life has a, uh, has a habit of repeating itself. So you won't evolve as a, as a spiritual being as consciousness until you learn that lesson and you could take lifetimes, right? Like, I just, I just feel that, you know? Oh, totally. I, I totally agree. And I'm a big, I talk a lot about pain. I actually have a vi video coming out on my YouTube channel tomorrow called positive pain, you know, and this is the pain that that is you know the, the the wall that it's hard sometimes for people to to push through but if you can if you can can acknowledge that that pain is there to help you accomplish something you know it's there to help you grow it's there to help you learn something or or achieve a higher state of being and if you can start shifting it over to this new perspective in your mind anytime you encounter anything painful you're like oh yeah this is good <laughs> you know this is really good bring it you know now I'm like you know I talk about this stuff a lot and uh, you know every the people that the people that like it they love it I do get the occasional like that's sick you know and I'm like well you know what's the alternative you run from pain every time you encounter something that's painful or you stare it in the face and you go through it and then when you get to the other side you laugh yeah, well, and Victor Frankl taught you know he <clears throat> he learned or he, he you know he developed the 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 practice of logotherapy through the concentration camp you know how are you going to decide you know you have the choice you have the decision of how are you going to approach that problem like are you going to be the victim or are you going to be um uh, you know have the mindset of they're not going to get they're they're never going to get that how do how do I put this they're never going to get the best of me right like they're never going to yeah. get that they're never going to have that choice you can take everything away from me my freedom my health my clothes, my dignity, but you're never going to take, gonna take that choice. You're never going to, I'm going to make that choice that so you're not going to get the best of me. Totally. Do you ever talk about like that thing that broke you? Um, I do. I actually have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk about it extensively, but yeah, I, um, it's, you know, to a lot of people, it probably won't sound that crazy. Um, you know, I wasn't, like victim of a violent attack or anything like that. What happened was I have this health condition called hereditary angioedemia. Well, I had it, I don't have it anymore. And I really attribute transurfing. I just transurfed to another reality where I don't have it anymore. But I, it started to flare up um, right around 35. And essentially what it does is it, it releases, you, your body releases a larger amount of histamines and people either have their hands or their feet or their eyes like really swell up very, very big. Mine was my face. So this happened a few times and the doctors really couldn't figure out how to stop it. It was very painful and it would last for a long time. The down time was just, I mean, my life kind of shut down and they put me on um, a, a common steroid called prednisone. And I had a bad reaction to the prednisone. It essentially plunged me into like a really, really manic state where I didn't sleep for uh, it was, I think it was about 35 days when I was finally hospitalized and I was convinced that I was never going to sleep again. I was living by myself in Los Angeles at the time. And the, the series of medication that I was on was only for a couple of weeks. So it had ended but the symptoms of everything, all the, the mania and the insomnia and the, it was, it was nightmarish. I didn't, I didn't attribute what I was going through to that. I didn't, I didn't consider that. So I actually thought that I was just losing my mind. So I thought I was just plunging into madness and every night was like, the sun would start to go down and I would start panicking and I would lay in bed at night and I would just kind of like run through, okay, so when, 
did it go wrong when, okay, so then this thing happened and then how did you respond? And then I just was like over analyzing the hell out of everything, trying to figure out where it had gone so wrong. And one morning I woke up and I couldn't, I couldn't really, there was times I could kind of grasp what had happened. Other times it was very elusive and ambiguous. I couldn't, I couldn't make sense. And I mean, obviously I wasn't in a state of mind to be trying to evaluate my life at that point, but I just woke up one morning, got out of bed up all night. I actually prayed to God for the first time in my life. I got on my knees and I was like, God, I don't know what is going on, but please help me. Just help me whatever. I just need help. And that sunrise, I got out of bed and I was like, this is it. I made myself a cup of coffee. I packed a single suitcase, threw it into the back of my car and I left Los Angeles and I never went back except to get the rest of my stuff. And I just, I gave it all, I gave it all up 15 years of building a life. I just drove away from it. And yeah, it was like, so, so this is what I'm talking about at the time you know, when I left and I went up to my parents' house, my parents saw the state that I was in. I plunged, my weight went way down. I was like a hundred pounds. They saw me, they were like, Jesus Christ. And then my mom was like, we need to take you to the hospital. And really quickly they discovered that, you know, it was the prednisone that had caused this this, you know, state, this, it just everything. I was having brain zaps. If you've ever heard of what those are, they're horrible. Oh, it's a nightmarish thing. But um, at the time, after I got out of the hospital, I was like, this is the worst thing that could have ever happened to me. Oh my God, what am I going to do? And, and the worst part of it was I had this incredible fear of ever going back to Los Angeles. I associated LA with all my pain and anxiety and all this stuff. So I couldn't go back and I didn't want to go back, but I also couldn't go back. And I thought, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. My life is destroyed. And, you know, then I found the knowledge that I did and I realized this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it was so polarized. It was, it was an amazing, it was an amazing experience. It was truly an amazing experience. Um, seeing yourself through something like that, where that level of, <laughs> trauma and anxiety and all that stuff and getting through that to the other side I mean nothing phases me now I'm just like bring it I can do <laughs> I'm fucking bulletproof now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah so that's that's what happened in a nutshell that's amazing um <clears throat> I could talk to you all night um how can people I appreciate that yeah how can people uh find out more about you and, and, you know, reality transfer. So we've got lots of stuff. This is six years of me creating, you know, whatever, whatever way you like to learn, you could listen to the audio book. You could purchase the book on Amazon. My YouTube channel, Transurfing TV, has almost 600 videos of me talking about transurfing. I give a lesson every single day of some way to apply one of the concepts practically to your life. We have a very active, thriving Facebook group. I'm on Instagram, reality underscore transurfing. The Facebook group is the International Transurfing Institute which I founded about four years ago. Um, yeah, transurfing.us for the website. There's lots of information on there. We have a teachable course that kicked off this year and has been really, really amazing. Lots of people have joined that. It's called Reality 2.0. And yeah, I mean, social media coming onto the Facebook group, I inter try to interact with everybody on there. I'm, I'm a very active member myself and obviously Transurfing TV is um, kind of where it's at with getting daily content in short little, you know, precise 
videos. It's, um, it's, it's coming along. We're almost at 10,000. It's been one year of me doing that and I've got 600 videos and almost 10,000 people in one year. So I'm very happy about it. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when it's all said and done with, like, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, I mean, I've kind of, I've kind of given up on the idea of a legacy. That's sort of what got me here in the first place. I woke up one morning shortly after I left Los Angeles and, you know, I had a good amount of money in my bank and low overhead and kind of was just on this easy street where I didn't really have much to be worried about. But I got out of the shower one morning and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, this is great and all, but what are you doing for others? And what are you going to leave behind? You know, you don't have kids. You're just kind of going to selfishly like cakewalk the rest of your life. How pathetic. And that's when I decided that, you know, once I found this knowledge that I wanted to help lead others to the knowledge and help them apply it. And that fueled me for a long time and it did a lot to keep me motivated but now you know and again I know this probably sounds a little bit nihilistic if I were to something to happen was to happen to me tomorrow I would be totally okay with it and I really don't I really don't care you know I really don't care I think it's more about it's more about the sense that I heard this thing once somebody said, I can't remember where, I think it was on a podcast or something, but this person said that before you die, there's a three second feeling. It lasts for three seconds. We're essentially the essence of who you were as a person and how you lived your life is felt super intensely for three seconds right before you die. And this really stuck with me. And at the time that I heard this, I was like, oh my God, I don't want to feel that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but now I've been doing enough, doing what I can do, doing what I'm called to do without fear and without hesitation to the extent that I know that feeling's going to feel really fucking good, you know? And, and that feeling, that three second feeling is what I'm in this for. That's what I'm doing it for is that three second feeling. <laughs> is that messed up? No, that's all. I love it. I love that perspective. I think uh, that's very unique. And I, I love, uh, you know, I love, you know, I love hearing that kind of stuff. Renee, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for joining the show. I think this is going to be um, pretty epic. I think this is going to help people out. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Trey. This was really a pleasure and I really appreciate the conversation and hope you find your way to whatever knowledge, you know, you, you seek out. I think that you're, you're doing God's work here and trying to help people connect with, you know, what they need to connect with too. And that's the best that we can really do. I think, you know, is just help each other out and try to spread the love when we can, you know? Mm -hmm.